Hello everyone, before I start the video I just want to give a major trigger warning. I do talk about S-A and um, the R word. So um, yes, trigger warning for that. Also, if you think I'm acting strange or not how you imagine an R or S-A victim to act, just bear in mind everyone acts differently. Plus, um, I was S-A'd from the age of 6 to... 16 so I've had a lot of conditioning throughout my life that um, made future R word cases um, a little strange um, and conditioned me to be a bit more submissive and so on even if you haven't gone through that as a child you can it's very easy to act like that when you feel like you're in danger it's a bit like a mouse freezing when a, you know, cat's trying to kill it, you know? Uh, I hope it all comes across okay. Also, I don't start the video knowing I'm going to talk about this story. So the start might seem a little off or, you know, considering we know what I'm going to talk about. But yeah, I start the video completely unaware that I'm about to talk about it. And a lot of the reasons why I have talked about it is because it was actually around this time uh, when like four years ago, actually, because I looked on my Facebook, looked at a memory thing pop up about um, something that, you know, ties in to this time. And it was four years ago around this time that this all happened. So I think that's why it's coming up for me at the moment. But anyway, I hope the video goes okay. And I hope that you can talk to me if you need uh, you can follow me on Instagram or comment down below. I just felt it was really important to get this story out um, because it's actually a huge part of who I am and I like to be transparent. Even though it's scary because it's like, what will people think of me now? Like, will people look at me differently? I really hope that you only look at me differently in a positive way. I hope that you look at me as strong and brave Um and not someone who'd gone through horrible things. Um, I don't. I don't want that kind of sympathy, if that makes sense. Of course, it's okay to feel empathy, but I am okay. I'm actually very, very proud of myself for being who I am today, considering uh, the life I've had. And I don't mean to say, "Oh, woe is me!" And my life's worse than other people's. Not at all. But um. It shocks me every day that I'm still here. So, <laughs> yeah, I hope it all goes well and the video makes sense and can help you, possibly. Um, even if it's just helping you get to know me. Okay, right, I'll shut up now. Hello, my wonderful spirit guides. So, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I did a video like this last month and I thought, why not do another one for this month? Um, I think think I'll do one every month. Basically, it's just me having a bit of a chat, doing my makeup at the same time. It's less about the makeup, more about just me waffling on about God knows what. I don't even have a plan. I just kind of go for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you're here, then welcome. I'm going to be doing a makeup look and I kind of want to go for it today. I've got some extensions in today as well. That's why my hair's like so voluptuous. Um, they're black extensions and my hair's like not exactly black. There's a bit of a two-tone going on, but I don't, I don't mind that. Anyway, let's get started. Um, oh yeah, and if this is your first time seeing my naked face, then hi, welcome to my naked face. Um, I don't have, uh, full eyebrows because I like to, uh, draw the tails on in like whatever shape I like. Yeah, I did put up a post saying, if you have any questions, um comment them down below let me know but um i you know didn't really give it enough time to be honest because i was like oh i'm ready to start and yeah um <laughs> i realized oh i've done this far too late notice so i deleted the post <laughs> i was like oh no but um yeah if you do have any questions you can always just drop them down below anyway and i might answer them in future videos don't know what you'd want to ask me but in the um q a thing i was like oh you can you know talk about mental health and so on if you want if you have any questions about that 
Um, I said in my previous video like this that I actually have, I have borderline personality disorder and I have complex PTSD. So two quite big whammies there. And you know, borderline personality disorder is like super stigmatized, which upsets me because like, there, as I do have traits of it, obviously, because I have borderline personality disorder, I am not like, I'm not a horrible person, if you know what I mean. I'm not like um, unreliable or, you know, or an addict or crazy or, or like mean or cruel or abusive, you know? Like, well, I don't think I am. You have to ask the people around me. <laughs> Maybe I am and I just don't know it. No, I'm not. But because of the complex PTSD as well, it really triggers. Oh, I also have, I suffer with something called PMDD as well. Oh my God, it's like never ending list of things I have. But um, yeah, the complex PTSD triggers the borderline, the borderline triggers the PTSD, and then the PMDD uh, triggers both the complex PTSD and the borderline personality <laughs> disorder. So it's just like this crazy mix. If you don't know what PMDD is, it's premenstrual dysphoric disorder. And basically, when most women get like, kind of, they don't feel good like a week or th a few days or a week before their period. And they can be like, you know, just feeling a bit tired, being a bit grouchy, moody, anxious, depressed, hungry, sore, achy. Yeah, well with PMDD, that kind of happens twice as hard for two weeks before the period so it's like a really heavy version of PMS um which is now fi it's finally now being you know more noticed as a mental disorder and it is very common for people with um PTSD or you know existing uh mental health stuff and uh, I only really found out I had that this year maybe a little bit of last year as well and honestly just it sucks it really does because like you know it's a bit like having bipolar but it changes more frequently and it has like a time schedule so like with bipolar you know you could be feeling manic and like really like overly happy but also like you know stressed happy um, and like enthusiastic and get a little bit crazy and whatever and I don't mean that in a rude way because hello I've got a bit million things I'm crazy <laughs> but um you know you can get like um all those things and you don't know how long it will last and then the lows come and you don't know how long they will last either like they can last really long times whereas with PMDD you kind of have that mania and that kind of um big low in like a routinely amount so like two weeks of feeling great and then two weeks of feeling terrible and uh, it's different for everyone but for me like I don't know mine go, oh, mine's so confusing because sometimes I can be like super like extremely happy for three weeks and then be like really down for three weeks even if it like overlaps the periods you know but it can't I don't think it's bipolar because I just feel like that's too fast and because I've got BPD as well BPD is like rapid um, emotional changes so like different to bipolar in the sense that like you can be really happy one second and then something will happen and you can just be like wanting to die the next quite terrible really but um I'm pretty high functioning I've had a lot of therapy in my life and um I'm on the waiting list for more counseling so I'm really happy about that I'm really excited for it it's difficult so like you know sometimes I might start a video saying I'm not feeling great today. Or I might start a video saying, oh, you know, I'm feeling a bit drained or not feeling right or I needed this to hear this today. This music has, has cheered me up. I might say that a lot and I don't want to come across as this like total sad girl. But at the end of the day, I am one. <laughs> I don't mean to be. It's my mental health, you know? I don't try to be. I actually try very, very, very hard to be as positive and um, good as I can, really. But yeah, with the um, complex PTSD, that I think, you know, that really is the main thing for me at the moment, especially. It was only three years ago when all my, like, actual traumatic events stopped. Like, 
like I was still surviving up until then and and, and I was going you know I'd be surviving then I'd start to heal but then something absolutely terrible would happen again and uh, I'd have to survive again and it's only been in the last few years that I could I've realized I don't have to survive now like things have nothing hugely eventful has happened now I, all the you know, trauma is kind of catching up with me now. So yeah, I'm going through that quite a bit. You know, a lot of it is like bad dreams. I have a lot of bad dreams and a lot of them and like sleep paralysis, false awakenings. So, oh, just some of the stuff is so like creepy. And like, oftentimes like, I, I had a bit of an issue actually like a few years ago where um I got a little, uh, I don't know, I think it's called magical thinking. I had such a terrible thing happen, basically, by someone at my university who was a friend, um, so-called friend. Right, so I'm skipping ahead a little bit because I realised that I start talking about the story um, in like a really kind of not focused way because I'm doing my makeup and I'm just kind of going da da da, yeah, and not really giving full detail and so on, and I was finding it hard to talk about and do my makeup at the same time. So I made the conscious decision to stop and start properly from the beginning. Um, I hope it makes sense and I hope it doesn't feel too repetitive. I've tried to cut out as much as I can. Um, there were good moments in what I did cut out though where I said, you imagine that only children or elders or vulnerable people can be manipulated and so on, which is true, but actually anyone can be manipulated. And a lot of this story, there's huge parts of me that were manipulated. And um, uh, because I didn't believe I could be manipulated again, I almost didn't believe I was being manipulated, if that makes sense. So, yeah, there's a lot of that. And I did speak about that, how, you know, and I thought that was important. So I thought I'd throw that in there again. Right, if we're doing this properly now, let me rehash a little bit of what I've said. Because I don't know how it came across, and I really want to be clear-minded as I tell this story. This is makeup video turn story time. Um, so yeah, if you're here, then this is what it is now. Basically, I was in university, and a great group, group of friends. I had gone for a breakup. I was in the year of my heart being broken. So that first year when your heart gets broken, coming out of a big relationship, it's always really difficult. I was in uni with a good, good group of friends. I would drink quite a bit. Um, and then, yeah, I had like this good friend. We were we were close and he always spoke about how he's a feminist. And, you know, this is kind of scary for me to say because I always worry about people watching my videos that I don't necessarily like, but um, hopefully they're not. And to be honest, I don't care because this this is my truth and, can't take that away from me, so whatever. So yeah, we were we were good friends and he would talk about how he's a feminist, he'd always make me feel good about myself, like he was really complimentary, really laid back, he really, really um funny. I would go to his house and a few of us would and we'd drink and we'd smoke and we'd just like have a good time. And then one time it was just me and him, like other people had left and I was staying over. I, I didn't think there would be any problem because obviously we'd been friends already for a year at this point, well, or just under a year. So I was like fine with that. Anyway, I got really, really quite drunk and also smoked quite a bit. And I wouldn't usually smoke a lot. So it was like the mixture of alcohol and that just made me want to vomit and pass out. <laughs> so I'm saying to him, oh I need I need a bin I need something to hold like as I go to sleep um so he gets me a bin all that anyway as I lie down to go to sleep he starts you know I don't, I'm not laughing because it's funny it's just really hard <laughs> he starts trying to do stuff you know I'm really drunk at this point so not just drunk but high and gonna throw up and blacking out oh I don't want to get too into it because it might trigger me so I'm just gonna I'm gonna kind of brush over it as much as I can because it's too hard it's too hard <laughs> I was saying no and stuff like that but kept coming in and out of consciousness 
And every time I came to, he would be doing something different. There would be other things involved, like objects involved in it. Like really hurt. Anyway, I don't, I, there's a big trigger warning on this video for sure. I need to stay in the now, here and now. I gotta do that. <laughs> oh, God. So I'll say no, coming in out of consciousness, new things would be happening. Because of my past of abuse as well, I kind of stopped saying no and just let it happen. Um, and because when I was young, I'd have to, um, yeah, survive. I did that in this situation because I was in a town that isn't my town. I don't drive. I didn't know how to, I didn't know what street I was on. I didn't know how to get to a train station, nothing. I was in this set, I wasn't in a house where there was other people in it. He had like a separate outhouse sort of thing. Um, honestly, I just felt trapped. And also I was incapable of moving because I was passing out every like two minutes. Um, and so on like that. It, it was just a really crappy situation. Anyway, the next day, because obviously I passed out for good and then woke up the next day, um, I woke up and I felt awful and a lot of pain as well. I don't want to talk about pain, actually. I, you know, I woke up and I felt him next to me and I was like starting to like recollect the little things that had happened and he said good morning or something I, I can't remember he said something and I think he like touched like my waist or something and I just burst into tears like hysterically started crying and saying well I couldn't say anything actually I was just crying and he was like what, what what's the matter and I was like started saying I didn't like it I didn't like what he did and when the tears came out, I did feel some power because I felt like, oh my God, like I'm not hiding it. I'm actually gonna confront him and I'm gonna I'm gonna be like, why did you do that? Um, which I found to be really brave of me. Anyway, so I, I asked him like, why, why, why did you do that? And he was like, what, what do you mean? I was like, I said, I said to him, I said, no, I, I said, no. Like I was really drunk and like, not with it, and I said no. And he was like, oh my God, it sounds like I R-worded you. And him just saying that like made me go, oh, if he can say that so freely and with such remorse, maybe he didn't mean to. Um, he, maybe he just like, didn't know. I, I don't know, that's what I thought at the time. I just thought, Oh, maybe didn't mean to. And he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I thought you were saying no playfully. I thought you were saying it like, no, no, like joking around. And I said, no, I wasn't. I was saying no, I'm pushing you away. He was like, yeah, I really didn't understand. I thought it was just playful. So I didn't know what to do, but just believe him. And I was like, oh, it's okay. And I started to comfort him. And he'd be like, it's okay, it's not your fault. So weird, isn't it? Anyway, I realised now I was being very manipulated, or he didn't know, and this is just how he treats women and hasn't been taught not to. Um, but it's, you know, that doesn't make it better. You should know these things. You should know that if you say, someone says no, you should stop, whether it's like playful or not, because how do you know they're being playful? How do you know that? Especially if they're about like passing out drunk. Nah. That doesn't make sense to me and I can't imagine doing that to someone so I don't know anyway I forgave in and I felt like I went home I you know I got picked up and went home and I had this like I think I got in a taxi actually and then I got a train home so yeah I um felt really horrible and uncomfortable just did not feel good at all um, I might carry on a little bit of the makeup and see see how that goes. If I can't, then I'll stop. But I didn't know what to do. I, I, I was confused. I was like, am I being crazy? Did anything bad happen? Or was I just, because of my history, did I just imagine something bad had happened? Um, he's saying he didn't do it after I confronted him. He wasn't defensive. He wasn't like, um, what the hell? Why would you say that? He was like, oh my God, I... I 
I didn't know. Like, he was really kind about it, you know? So I was questioning myself, like, oh, my God, I'm crazy. I'm literally crazy. Like, because of what's happened to my past, I imagine this consensual experience to have been something non-consensual. i just literally been fully manipulated, though. Because when I think back to it now, it's like, I clearly said no, I didn't like it, it hurt, I was passing out, I was thinking of ways to escape but couldn't think of how. Also, he would be doing things to me, um, newer and different things to me that he hadn't asked about, uh, like the objects that he was putting, not just in me vaginally, but anally. Um, he didn't ask and I would you know, be in pain and not happy, like I was upset, um, but I kept passing out. Um, I even urinated as well. So it's very clear that he knew what he was doing to me. Like these are all real things that happened anyway, but I kind of tricked myself into believing I was crazy, basically. Um, so I didn't know how to tell anyone, because I was like, oh, no, it was a normal situation. What am I meant to do? <sighs> I think about a week later, I went and saw Guns N' Roses with a, a close friend of mine. You know, I told her the situation, and I said to her, I don't really understand, was it, wasn't it, was it? You know, I don't know. She was like, no, that's really screwed up. And I started to feel a bit then like, oh God, yeah, it's screwed up. But because she has also gone through not great things with people, you know, I thought maybe we're both just more sensitive or whatever. So I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. Basically, he kept messaging me being like, should we meet up and do this? Or should we go do that? And I was like, mm, kept like being like, I can't, I'm busy because I just didn't want to see him, even though I've forgiven him. I um, didn't want to see him, like I was still scared because I still felt so confused. Anyway, time goes on, I think like a month or two, or a month and a half I reckon, and a group of us were going to go see a band and he was going to be there. And I was like, it's okay, yeah, there's a group of us, you know, this might be a good opportunity to see how he is and if he's strange or whatever. Anyway, we got the train down together, him and I, and uh, all was good, but I just had this really tense feeling, you know, I just, I just didn't feel good. Um, anyway, when we got to the place, we went to the bar, and um, he said, so yeah, you want to come for a party back at mine later with, with you know, so-and-so, other friends? And I just straight up said no. I was like, ah, uh, I can't, I can't tonight. And he was like, oh, why not? And I was like, uh, you know, I've got things to do tomorrow. I don't want to be tired. Uh, you know, I just want to kind of keep it chill tonight. And he was like, well, if it's because you think I'm going to do anything, then I'm not. And, like, him just addressing it like that made me go, I just didn't see I was like, no, I didn't think that. I didn't think that. But, like, um, I just can't. And then I think I did actually say something like, oh, yeah, no, 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 this comes later. So I asked my friends who were there as well, I was like, are you going to go to so-and-so's house? Like, are you going to come? Because I'll only go if you guys do, you know? And they were like, mm, mm, I don't know. And I was like, well, I'm literally only going if you do. And I even said to the horrible person, I'm only going if they go. That's what I said to them. I was like, I just was quite upfront about it. I kind of was just like, well, I'm only going to go if they go. I don't want it just to be me and you. I know you're not going to do anything, but I just feel more comfortable. Anyway, my friends decided to agree. So I was like, okay, I guess we're going then. And then I asked them, you know, is it okay if I stay at yours, you know, when you go home though? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. So I was like, okay, that like this all sounds okay. Anyway, as we're driving there, it's all good. And then we get there. And my two friends go, you know what, I think we're gonna we're gonna head back actually. I don't think we're gonna come in. And so I'm in a situation now, because I'm like, 
we're here now and they live in another town to me and they're going home to their other town. And basically, I just had this situation where I was like, oh no, they weren't, they weren't, I wasn't going to stay at their house, they were going to drop me home after is what it was. Sorry, I'm getting really messed up. <laughs> Terrible. But um, yeah, they were going to drop me home. So remembering more clearly in editing, sorry about this, this is really like dragging a little bit. I I feel I don't talk very fast because I'm just trying to recollect every detail. Um, anyway, basically what happened was I said to them, if we don't go to bad guy's house, then can you drop me home? And they're like, sure. But the thing is, we did go to bad guy's house and then they decided to go home. But if they took me home, they'd have to go even further um, again. I missed my chance to be dropped home, basically. That's literally how it went. Anyway, so um, I'm in a situation now and I'm like, we're outside this guy's house and he's in the car with us. I felt this feeling of, I can't just say, oh, okay, drop me home then. Because we've gone past my town and they're going to be going back to their town and it would be a detour and they've just drove me there. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't want to, like, make it seem obvious that I was worried. Like, I didn't want to be like, oh, drive me home then. And then the guy who did what he did to me would be like, oh, why? Like, you're here now. You may as well stay. Like, I was just basically in a horrible situation where I just felt scared and silenced and frozen. So I was like guys, come on, come in, come in, please. Like, no, no, and I'm like, I just felt too rude to ask for them to drive me home and I didn't want to upset the other guy thinking, like, let him down, I didn't want to let him down. And like, now, I wish I did, of course, but hindsight is a funny thing. Anyway, so I go into his, they drive home, I'm not feeling great, I end up being quite stupid because I'm already in the pits of hell <laughs> at this point, I'm already really scared. I just decide to like really drink and really smoke. Um, I didn't know what would be coming, but I decided to get really, really, you know, effed up because if whatever did come, I was hoping that I could just be more gone than the first time to even recognise it. It makes me so sad to say that now, but that's just the way it is. Uh, so yeah, I got really drunk and whatever. And it's a bit like the first situation, I started to feel a bit sick and a bit tired. And there is a big part of me at this point that really is trying to trust him as well. Like he's been quite good the whole night. He hasn't done anything weird. He's been quite kind, so there is part of me that's relaxing too. You know, not just wanting to get fucked up just in case something happens, I'm also relaxing and I'm like not worrying as much. Anyway, I go to go to sleep. He has told me profusely that he would never do that again, but he does. So yeah, he does it again. Maybe it seems like I was asking for it in the eyes of someone who has not gone through uh, series of abuse and doesn't understand what it does mentally to you how you become submissive and frozen and you learn ways of you learn that you are not a human you learn that you are just an object for men uh, and that's what I thought for a very long time so I learned that I just probably had to take whatever I got and when he did it to me again that's exactly what I did I just let him do anything um It was painful. I didn't like any of it. I didn't actually say anything really or do much. I just did nothing. And he just did what he did. So the next day I wake up and I'm just normal with him, but I'm very just like detached. I'm like, yeah, I'm just feeling not great. I'm gonna go home. So my daughter's dad comes and picks me up and I get in a car. And he's like, you all right? And I was like, not really.
he goes, do you want to, what, what's happened? And I was just like, I don't know. That's it. And I went home. And that's what I was like for like three weeks on my own, just like, okay. And I saw a video of myself. I got a new sofa the next day and I was like really happy that I got this new sofa. But and I got a video of myself spinning around on my new swivelly chair thing. And when I see that video now like pop up, I just look at my eyes and I'm like, she's dead behind those eyes. Cause like all of this horrific thing had just happened and I was just pretending everything's okay. He tries messaging me like, do you want to go do this? Do you want to go do that? I basically just don't respond. I don't talk to him. Again, try not to make it seem like anything was a problem. Uh, I really felt this time I'd done it to myself. You know, I really felt this time I was just stupid and it was my fault, big time. I just really did feel that way. As time goes on, I go back to uni and the summer is over. I'm terrified because I'm gonna see my friend, my girl, my one of my girlfriends. I'm gonna see her and she is the ex of this guy, yeah? And I'm like, oh, I hope no one's said anything weird or any rumours gone round, you know? Like, he's, I hope he's not told anyone what that I've done this and that with him, um, in his words, you know, in his way. Uh, it turns out she somehow found out. So I'm like, he obviously said something because there's only two people in that scenario. I didn't tell anyone. Uh, anyway, she asked me point blank in the common room, did you sleep with so-and-so? And I just, like I said earlier, I just went, no, no. But my heart was beating out of my chest and in my throat. And I was like, no, I definitely didn't. She's like, well, I heard, like, are you sure? And I was like, no, I definitely didn't. But I didn't elaborate. I didn't go like, no, why would I do that? No, what? Well, that's crazy. No, what the fuck? I didn't even do that. I, I didn't have the capability to be that, like, good at lying in that situation. Because, quite frankly, I didn't want to lie. I just felt forced to because I felt like, who's going to believe me anyway? Like I said earlier, like, who will believe me? This is our friend. Like, why would anyone believe that? Why? Like, it's just going to seem like I'm saying it because... Um, I don't want to be a bad person who sleeps with my friend's exes, you know. She was like, if you did, I don't really mind. Don't worry about it. But, you know, in my head, I hadn't. What had actually happened is he R'd me, R-worded me. And that's not consensual. That's not a mutual decision. Especially after the second time, I just got so dumb. I was like, well, that does seem like I've, like, gone behind their back, you know. And I couldn't, I couldn't even justify it to myself. It was too confusing. Anyway, I just had to know. Um, and I hate lying. Like, it's, I really hate it. I think I told my partner at this point. Uh, yeah, definitely I did. And I told my friend that I told the first time again. At this point. I hadn't told them for weeks, but then I did, you know, if that makes sense. So, you know, I, I get in the car with my partner at the end of the day and I tell him and I'm like, this is horrible. I feel trapped. I feel so trapped. And there's this evil person that did these things to me. And I have no voice. And I can't tell anyone. And it's so scary and disgusting. Um, anyway, month, a couple, I think it's only a month actually. I think it's October. But me and the girlfriend uh, were at uh, our other friend's house, like the group. And this guy, the bad guy, wasn't there. I'm sat on the bed with my girlfriend and I say, you know, I'm quite tipsy. And I just say to her, out of nowhere, I went, I've got to tell you something. And she's like, oh, what? And I was like, I don't know how it came out of me, but I've been thinking it every time I've seen her anyway over the weeks. But um, I said, i got to tell you something. She's like, okay, what? And we're both playing like, uh rayman on the on like playstation one on uh, so it's like really random and i just said so and so r worded me and i was like you don't even have to believe me and to be honest i wouldn't blame you if you don't believe me because why would you believe me you asked me if i'd done 
slept with him. I said no. And um, in my head, I hadn't, but I didn't know how to say to you, actually, he R-worded me, though I've wanted to tell you for weeks and weeks, I've wanted to tell you. I, you know, so I, I've drawn this big, long thing. She looks at me and she goes, I believe you. And oh my God, like I just, every bit of tension and fear and trappedness that I'd had uh, just flooded out of me. I could actually feel this weight go out of me like a wave. Um, I looked at her and I was like, you, you don't have to just say that, like, you believe me? And she's like, yeah, because everything you're describing, he did to me. And then all that, like, all that relief that I felt kind of just turned into, like, despair and just, like, sadness because she had gone through the same thing when she was with him. She was like, the actual things that you described, like the physical things that he did to you, he did those to me. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I was just so surprised and so sad. Anyway, we couldn't stop talking about it basically all night. Like we were just like, da -ba -da -ba -da -da. and then the next day we had breakfast together and we were still talking about it. We were like, what do we do? Like, this is horrible. Like, and describing like would he do this would he do that and she's like yes and then he would do this and then he would do that like in her scenario it was like oh you know he would say that like he would do something horrible um he would sa me and then when i'd say why did you do that this is her word he would go oh i'm sorry i've just had like a really bad day i've just had such a bad day and like i just wanted to feel better that's what he would say in like a sympathetic way. And then she would feel sorry for him. Like I felt sorry for him when he was like, I didn't mean to do that, you know? Um, and then he would constantly want to go down on her and she didn't like that. And she would try and push him up to not, but he would grab her and do it anyway, like not let her. And then he would be like, oh, I thought you were playing. Again, he would, said that to her like he said to me so this is all adding up in such a freaky way um so, so weeks go by we don't know what to do <sighs> i go back to you like i'm in uni anyway i'm so scared of seeing him all the time this guy because i do actually have to see him when i'm there and now it's all come out between me and you know the ex-girlfriend my friend and we know this thing that he's done he doesn't know that he doesn't know any of this I started to feel this heavy attention. I'm in my final year of uni, so this is hard enough. I go into uni one day and I ask, I need an extension. Because, and I say, I just was like, finally said to my teacher, basically, this has happened from this person. Um, I don't feel great, I feel scared, and I don't know what to do. I just told him, and just told him everything. And he was like, right, okay, I'm gonna have to go talk to the centre manager. So, that is what happened. The centre manager then comes to talk to me, and it becomes a bigger thing than I thought it would be. I, I just thought I could say it, and that would be it, but no, it doesn't work like that. So yeah, the centre manager comes to talk to me, who's a woman, and uh, she asked me about it all, She's like, this is horrible. But then she kept saying to me, are you sure, are you sure, you know, it was that? Like, And she started asking me questions like, oh, why did you go back though? Why? And she's like, why didn't you just run away? And she said, when I was young, I had something like that happen to me, but I just like jumped out the car and ran away. And I'm like, good for you. You're so strong. You're so fucking amazing. Well done, fucking bitch. I'm like, good for fucking you. Do you know what I mean? I didn't run away. I didn't. Does that make me shit? Does that mean I asked for it? Does that mean because I wanted it? How about you didn't go through a whole lifetime of conditioning that if I said no, it didn't matter? Did you go through that? No, you didn't, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Sorry, it makes me angry. Anyway. She's asking these questions and I'm having to explain myself and saying, well, because of my life, this, that and the other. And she's like, no, right, yeah. 
I see. Oh, yeah. And then she's like, you're going to go to the police about it? I was like, I don't think I will, actually, because I have gone to the police about other situations before and honestly have been shat on. So whatever. It just feels like no one understands what it's like. Like, even people in authority don't, especially men, and I don't mean to be rude, but it's true, they don't seem to understand that, like, if you have gone through these things as a child, you're going to act differently to someone who has it happen to them in the future, you know, like. Please don't uh, take this as me telling you not to go to authorities uh, if you have gone through something like this. This is just my experience, but my advice would be that you make sure you get as much evidence as you can, text messages, um, uh, just anything, anything you can, uh, if you can voice record, ring the police, uh, these things all sound ridiculous in a, in a moment like that, and it feels like, how can you get that evidence in that time, and that's true, you might not be able to at all, but if you don't have any evidence, and you don't know how to get any, make sure that when you go and tell the authorities, you look into the laws, and you find out as much as you can that could help you uh, get some legal advice. Because if I had known more, like, if I'd known what we know now, like what goes around on the internet about if you're unconscious, then it's not consensual. If I could have pressed that uh, at the time of me telling the police what happened to me, um, maybe it would have been different. Maybe it would have been different. Um, but I didn't really understand that then, but now I do. So make sure you understand exactly what consent, what is consent and what isn't consent. Look into everything. Just be very smart because if you act like you don't know what's going on and vulnerable, it's horrible, but they usually don't care. Um especially in small towns or whatever, or big cities, I don't really know. Um, but, you know, I've recently, on a whole different story, had an investigator literally interrogate me and other girls who were victims to uh, SA crime. But he finally told us that he hadn't worked on a crime like this before. Um, he used to work in terrorism. So... Um, terrorism and drugs or something so it was like he was interrogating us because that's how he learnt uh, to be a detective sort of thing not an investigative detective I don't know, same thing <laughs> but yeah, just be smart and confident real make sure you've got people on your side that can like you know, really fight for you as well. Um, that is the best advice I could give, really, because um, you just never know what's going to happen. So you're going to act differently to someone who's only had it happen to them as an adult, if that makes sense. Both are just as bad, but, like, you do act differently. So, whatever. But anyway, she said she has to ring the police anyway because it's part of a you know, university safety thing, and I was like, okay, whatever. Well, she didn't actually tell me that, she just did it, and then she told me after that she had to do it because it's part of their university thing. And I was like, okay, that's fucking great. Um, I really wish I hadn't told anyone at this point. And then he had to be notified, the person who did it, and that's great, isn't it? And we had to be kept apart at all times, but it doesn't matter because it, I just felt like every time I went to uni, he was gonna be there waiting for me, and I'm not even joking, me and my both my friend thought he might kill us. Like, I know that might sound dramatic, but if someone can do what he did, you don't know what else they could do. And so we are terrified that we're gonna turn up at uni, get on a train or walk down the street and he's gonna get some friends, because he had a lot of friends, or get someone, or come stab us. Like, we thought that he would kill us. So we're terrified, going to the same uni every day, the uni work is getting heavier as time is closing in, the police have been called, they ask, do you want to go forward with it? 
I asked my friend, do you want to go forward with it? And she said, yes, this is her first real like thing like this, police wise. So I kind of felt like I should then, uh, I didn't necessarily want to, but at the same time I was like, I feel like I should, you know, let's try and nail this bastard then. If, we, if we're doing it together, maybe it'll be okay. So yeah, months are going by, we're scared that he's gonna be on a train, we're scared that he's gonna be here outside the uni, we're scared that he's gonna turn up at a, our end of term gigs. We're terrified of all these little bits and bobs uh, happening. Um, and it was even scarier because like um, my parents were a, not a gig of his by, by choice, but there was lots of bands playing and they were ripped drunk and they ended up having a go at him and saying to him like, you're a racist and so on, which is like obviously terrifying to me, but like it made me feel happy that my parents had my back like that. But um, it caused me more anxiety, I can't, I can't lie because I thought now he's going to turn up at my gigs and it's going to be my fault. And he also made it sound like this huge ordeal to the uni. He told them that my parents like beat him up or something, <laughs> which isn't true. They also were like choking my stepdad and stuff like that. So his friends were, so, you know, I'm saying I'm scared of him. Yeah, of course I am. He, his friends were literally choking my stepdad. What they did to him didn't even pale in comparison. They just were calling him an R word. And like, standing up for me, they've heard what's happened to their daughter. Of course, they're gonna be upset if they see the guy who's done it. You'd be crazy if he just stood there and just went, you know what I mean? Anyway, I don't really care. I'm glad that they did, did that now. But um... Basically, my mum had had a few drinks and they were, you know, at a concert and, um his band was playing and she recognised his face. After a few drinks, I don't think she could really contain it any longer. So she went up to him um, and she said, do you know Fern? And there's not many people called Fern, to be honest. So, you know, he knew exactly who she was talking about, but he went, what, who, who? And of course he knew who she was talking about, seeing as he'd been arrested, you know, because of me. But, um, well, because of him, what he did, not me. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Anyway, she was like, you know who I'm talking about. And he was like, oh, what, what, what? And then she said, well, I'm her mother. And you are a R word. Um, R-ist. And um, he just kind of went really quiet and didn't say anything. Just kind of kind of like walked out the pub and when my parents had walked out the pub and with their friends all of this bad guy's friends started shouting at them being horrible the women calling my parent like my mum and her friend uh s-l-u-t-s -S, um and just liars and so on my stepdad got angry and was like start shouting just shouting though and then bad guys, one of bad guy's friends go up to my stepdad and choke him against a wall. And um, my mum's friend, who I love, she kicked that guy in the balls, <laughs> um, which is fair enough. He's literally choking my stepdad. It all ends, um, I think she punches one of them as well or something. Uh, no, she punches the same guy, I think, as well. But... Um, yeah, all ends. My mum and dad ring me and I'm like, oh my God, what's happened? Like, I'm terrified because I'm like, oh my God, this is going to make it worse for me. I don't really think my, my parents could understand that side of the trauma. They thought that they were just having my back and sticking up for me. And that will, he, that will you know, that will teach him. But it doesn't really work like that in my mind. What I feel like is like, that's going to give him more reason to want to kill me and hurt me or come and break into my house or whatever uh but anyway that happened and I know it sounds absolutely crazy and kind of hilarious that my parents were in that situation but I did think if that was my daughter I couldn't just sit and watch her ar artist do that like um play on stage and be all happy I couldn't just watch that I'd want to say something too um I don't know what I would do in that situation at the end of the day, but yeah. Yeah, so 
all these things happening, la la la. My close friends from the uni, you know, they know about it now. Um, one of them actually, you know, was so in closely, slightly closely tied to um, the situations. And he could have been a really great witness to my behaviours because we were all at a party once and I said to my friend, don't leave me here. Um, not at this guy, we weren't at the bad guy's house, we're at one of the bad guy's friend's house. And I said to my other friend, um, don't leave me here. I'm really drunk, but don't leave me here. Make sure you take me when you go. Because I was lying down on a sofa feeling terrible. I, obviously I couldn't really drink, handle my drink then. Or I would, I, to be fair, I just would get so drunk and not think about it because I was in a bad place anyway. But, um, but I pretty much begged him. Anyway, the bad guy was saying, you can just stay here. You could just stay here. Like, you know, no one's going to come in. It will all be all right. But I was saying, oh, thank you. Thank you. But then I was turning around to my other friend being like, don't leave me here. He's like, why? And I'm like, just don't leave me here. Don't leave me here. Anyway, he doesn't leave me there. He drags me down the stairs with his girlfriend. And I'm going, and I'm like this. Like, I can't see. But I'm like, thank you. Thank you. And I get in a car and I'm passed out. I get back and I get into bed. Um, in the spare room into you know at my friend's house and I'm just saying thank you don't understand how much that means to me that you didn't leave me here by the way this this time was before everything came out by the way so this was before everything came out but it was after the second time he did what he did to me so I did see him I think that was the only time I did see him after that time apart from at uni I hope that makes sense I didn't I never told my friend why though why I was so happy that he didn't leave me there I wish I did now but remember I was scared that no one would believe me so yeah I just said thank you um but anyway he could have told the police that right the police asked him to like be a witness to certain things and he was like oh yeah telling me that he's got to see the police and all that but I don't think he ever 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 talked to the police and that will forever upset me. Anyway, life goes on. I get all the police stuff back and they say, sorry, we're not going through with it. There's not enough evidence. And in their thing to me, they say that I consented to oral, which I didn't. I just, I would wake up and it would be happening, if that makes sense. Uh, and I can say no, but if I'm passing out, that is no. I don't really understand their logic. They also said, you don't remember whether you or he took your trousers off or when they came off. And I'm like, yeah, I don't remember. I was absolutely screwed up and that was the last thing on my mind with whether my trousers or when they came off, you know, whether they, uh, I did it or he did it I, and I couldn't imagine why I would do it I told them I had trousers on the next time I came to they were off and they were like well can you remember who did it or when and I was like I can't remember that um anyway they used that against me and I don't actually understand I just don't think they could be fucking asked to even go through with it I don't think they could so that just fucking sucks but um and he also said that they weren't going to count the second time as rape it's a shitty justice system we have, isn't it? But anyway, um, and they told me that my friend's one, yeah, just wasn't rape. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And I remember reading that letter to my partner and my really close friend and another friend, like a close friend. And I was just crying and it like, it was horrible. But anyway, so that had happened. That was great. And then we finished uni. And unfortunately, I didn't get the grade I wanted, even though I'd been pretty much promised a grade, they lowered it. I made an album. My teacher gave me 15% less than what another examiner gave me from, a, from you know, a university across the country. Because I was in a university in my capital city of where I live, but that university was actually tied to one up country um, as the main one. Anyway, they gave me a higher grade than the person who knew me, but they go with the person who knows me's grade 
if that makes sense. They go with that one, ultimately. I could have appealed it, but to be honest, I was going through so much that I just didn't want to. I just felt really hard done by. I didn't go to my graduation because I was too upset. And not only that, but my friends, my so-called friends who've been there for me throughout this whole year of um, when it first came out, like October to, you know, May, uh, no, June, October to June, when they had found out what happened to me, to June, they were so close with me, telling me that, that I'm, well, especially the, the guy, when the guy's like, I'm going to go to the police, the one that was actually witnessed things from me, said he was going to go to the police, and they had been there for me, and the girlfriend, like, not the one, not the ex-girlfriend, but another girlfriend who I'd been really close with throughout that year, and I told her everything, I, she saw me go through my trauma, she heard me out, she was there for me, anyway, they, them two had gone to a festival, and they'd come back, and, like, this girl, let's just call her Chloe, um, so Chloe, who isn't the ex-girlfriend, the ex-girlfriend I'm gonna call Jessie, okay, so the ex-girlfriend's called Jessie, and this girl's called Chloe, so Chloe had been really close with, Jessie and I were close, we were just felt like sisterly bond, but Jessie wasn't turning up a lot to uni, I think she was going through a lot, actually. It gets a little confusing because I obviously have just called one friend Chloe and I called the ex-girlfriend who is my friend as well, Jessie. But then throughout the rest of the video, I started calling Chloe Jessie and Jessie is just a uh, ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I'm sorry that I did that. Um, I've never done a story time before, so yeah. <laughs> okay. But I was going through, uh, going to uni to try and like fight you know I, I didn't want to let what happened to me take over I wanted to get a good grade that had happened and then my two friends Jesse and I'm going to call the guy Jack yeah Jesse and Jack um they come back from this festival and I'm just with Jesse at first and I'm like how was the festival la, la, la. and she was like yeah yeah it's great and then she goes oh yeah bad guy was there actually bad guy's the bad guy like, bad guy was there, actually, and I was like, oh, and she was like, yeah, like, he was there, and we just said hello, um, you know, went to his tent, and I was like, all right, like, sorry, what, like, you went to his tent, um, what do you mean, like, what do you mean, like, <laughs> and she's like, yeah, like, my boyfriend just had a smoke with him, yeah, we danced with him a little bit in a dance tent another night, and she was just saying it so like nonchalant, like just being like, yeah, yeah, like as if it was all okay. And I was just like, I so confused, really. Um, I said to her like, okay, like why, 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 uh, okay. And anyway, I, yeah, I, yeah, I was just a bit like that. But then I said, okay, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. So that's what I did. I went to the bathroom and I'm in shock, right? I'm like, what? Why is she talking to this guy who? did this thing to me uh I come back from the bathroom and I decide now I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna ask her like and I'm gonna tell her it hurts my feelings you know to her face and again it's so annoying I'm always in a weird situation I was at a house in the middle of bloody nowhere we had to get a bus to get there and I'd never been there before do you know what I mean like because we don't ever really see each other at uni or at, like different events um, we were close, but we didn't go to each other's houses, um, because of the fact that we lived far away from each other. But anyway, uh, I'm like, great, again, I'm in a situation I can't escape, so I'm gonna have to hit it head on a little bit without being, like, too dramatic. Anyway, I, asked, I said to her, I'm not gonna lie, that really hurts my feelings that you talk to him. And I was crying at this point, and I didn't want to cry, I really didn't want to cry. She was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I, I like... I didn't think, we didn't like talk loads, it was just a little bit, I didn't think, and I was like, I just wish that you could have just walked past, like, I'm not asking you to be horrible to the person, to the guy, but I mean, you could have just ignored him, and she's like, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> anyway, kind of get over it, I don't get over it, but I'm like, I can't be crying about this all day, we get on a bus back to town, I go and have dinner with my cousin, and I tell her the situation, and I was meant to be going to meet those friends again after dinner with my cousin. I tell her the situation, and my cousin's like, 
you don't don't go meet them again don't and I was like no I have to because I have to know more so I need to I need to know what why why and I need to know what my other friend was thinking Jack was thinking because I hadn't seen Jack yet that day I was like I need to know you know so anyway that's what I do I go meet them and I say to Jack why you know I'm really sad because Emily was telling me that you're all hanging out with bad guy and he was like um yeah yeah just a little bit he was like really really deflecting being really like oh yeah yeah I'm like you know not really and like I was like well it really hurts my feelings he's like all oh, right and then he'd start talking to Jessie and she was upset because her boyfriend wasn't really talking to her that day so she was like oh he's not messaging me and Jack was really paying attention to that and I'm there going hello like I'm talking about the person who oh well did me that you've been there for me about and you're just acting like I'm not here anyway I decided to basically give up talking about it because I'm like no one's actually listening to me like or caring anyway we go to a bar and I'm like no fuck it I'm bringing it up again we sit at the bar and I'm holding a drink right and I just go I'm drinking it and I'm like I'm really upset guys I'm really upset why did you do that and um Jessie is in the bathroom no Jessie goes uh, I'm just going to the toilet yeah so I'm talking to Jack like more one-on-one -on -one because I'm actually really close to Jack in that way and I'm like why why did you do that and he's like the thing is fair and like we just don't want to take sides and I just my hand was like this on my drink like that and I just went slammed it down really hard and was like what do you mean take sides there isn't side he r worded me he r'd me how is that why would you take sides I was like why don't you believe me he's like no we do believe you Jesse had come back now like no we do believe you like we do believe you and then I think Jesse or either Jack said you know he's changed I feel like he's really changed and I was like what do you mean he's changed if you are word someone you don't change there isn't change in that like not like what within a few months and like change how is that up to you did he do it to you no he did it to me I think I get to choose that also I mean that like even if he had changed it doesn't change what he did to me and what he did to me has changed me you know it hurt and has changed me for life um, so I don't care if he's changed and he's suddenly a better person and doesn't do that anymore. Plus, how do they even know when these things are so private? Um, it just really upset me. Anyway, I'm really, like, so frantically, like, triggered and upset and angry. And I just go, fuck you guys. And I, like, I really slam the drink down, I think. I think that's when I slam the drink down. I neck it, then slam it down, I think. Because um, at first I'm just doing the shaking, but I think this is the time I just slam it down. And I just went up to, out and outside the pub, I just was like out there and I was like, and I was trying to roll a cigarette and I couldn't roll it. And I was just like, you know, really freaking out. Um, I ring my boyfriend, I'm like, please come get me, please come get me. I'm really, really, really like in a horrible nightmarish situation. He's like, okay, I'm coming. Just try and act like, try and be as okay as you can for now. And me being like the dumbass that I am, instead of like running away and waiting in a spot, I decide to go back to them because I'm like hoping they'll change their mind. You know, I'm hoping they'll go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I go back to them and I don't really say much and they're just having their own conversation. Like, it's awkward. So we go wait at another bar. I know it sounds so weird that I'm still there, but I'm like almost hoping that they will see me. Like that they will be like, yeah, I am sorry. I'm like waiting, like, are they going to? So I'm walking on and we sit at this bar and they're, they're talking to each other like, la la la, la la la. And we sat down at this table in the bar. And I'm just like, like looking down. And Jesse goes to me, are you all right? And I was like, I feel like, I said to them, I feel like I'm invisible. I feel like if I just smashed my head on that wall right now, no one would be able to see me and it wouldn't matter. I said, I feel like I am literally awake inside a nightmare. Two of my closest friends at the moment don't care about me. 
And just to uh, reiterate the point, um, these two friends had been there for me about this certain situation over, like, since October to June. Just stressing that point, they'd been there when I've been freaking out about going to uni, scared about doing the end of term gig, worried that he's going to come and do this, that and the other, heard all my, my traumas, heard all the things that scared me, knew I was going through with the police. They were there for me. And they suddenly are telling me that he's changed and they don't want to take sides, like suddenly. And imagine like your best friend su being, being there for you and then suddenly going, actually, no, um, we kind of don't care, basically. And she said, the thing is, like, my dad did SA to my sister and even if I saw him, I couldn't be horrible to him. I can just ignore him. And I said, well, you're fucking weak then. I was very angry. And I said, you're weak. And I was like, I don't want a friend like you. I literally do not want a friend like you. I said, listen, that's the way you are. I can't change. You know, if you, you can change that, but I'm not going to expect you to change. I'm not going to expect you to be different. But all I can do is... I can change the fact that we're friends. I don't want to be your friend. So, okay. You know, my boyfriend turns up. I give, we give her a lift home. And I'm in a car when she's dropped off. And I'm absolutely distraught. I'm just, like, talking to my boyfriend. Just, like, I'm cursed. And this is how this thing started. That I, something that I mentioned at the very start of the video when I was talking about dreams and sleep paralysis it all comes back to that because i believed i was heavily cursed at this point and if this is what triggered like a kind of magical thinking psychosis thing in me this video is already getting quite long um i do start talking about my psychosis kind of magical thinking um experience later on in the video but i think i'm going to cut it out and if you're kind of interested in that I might make a video about that separately. Anyway, the pain was painful. Um, very. My friend, Jessie, messaged me the next day saying, I'm so sorry, I won't talk to this person again. I want your friendship more than his. I, I, I don't know what came over me. And I forgave her. But then she never messaged me again when I said, do you want to go do something? She just didn't bother messaging me again. So I'm like, oh, what's the point in saying all that? And then... You don't want to hang out with me anyway. I guess you changed your mind. So I was like, fuck you then. Didn't say that, but I fought it. I just let her be. Jack just never talked to me again. My friend, who was the ex-girlfriend, I, I love her to pieces still. We don't hang out a lot, but I love her. I love her so much. We are bound by our awful experience, but I love her and I, I, I respect her so much. Uh, but yeah, following that time, Having the bad union result, the whole case didn't go through and two of my closest friends didn't believe me or care. Or, or they believed me but they didn't care. I basically just kind of cracked up a little bit. Anyway, that is the end of that story. Um, he is doing, the bad guy is doing whatever he wants. I don't know what he's doing. Those two friends of mine, Jack, I don't know what he's doing. Jesse constantly likes my stuff on Facebook even though we aren't friends. And I don't get it, and I really don't care for it. Um, if she wants to say sorry again and, like, really go into it, then I'm actually, my ears are open. But other than that, stop liking my stuff. Like, like that's sorry, because it's not. And I am healing from that. I am trying to, as much as I can. The police suck. <laughs> they really do. Um, but that's that. I'm just going to get on with the makeup now and kind of like speed it along because this is going to be a long video. I'm kind of glad that it's not like a Q&A now because I feel like I'm just really glad to get that story out and you know a little bit about me. And that is just one of many horrific stories of my life because my life is so bad. <laughs> but um, no, I don't want to sound like that. But at the same time, I've lived one. I've lived a weird life um, as have we all. But um, yeah, I'm just going to carry on the makeup now and shut up.
guess I should get on with it Try to forget I get depressed Be happy and good when the chance should come about Instead of being stressed I know, I know I shouldn't moan when I get happy Just be happy, forget the strain of yesterday Okay, I think I'm done. Um, as you can probably see in the sped up thing, I was doing a few faces because um, I'd accidentally put on like a really dark contour. Like, oh God, it's still kind of coming through. Um, and um, yeah, I had to put on like a load of this powder on top of it to like kind of just like tone down the color. And obviously when you, the more powder you put on, the more dry your face becomes. And I'm not used to that. I don't, I never did like too much usually. Um, and you can see it's gone a bit like a gray, horrible color here now, because of like the blending of like the darkness with the lightness, it's gone like a bit of a horrible color. So I'm really kind of unhappy with how this has gone. Um, face wise, I might actually take off all the makeup off my face. Um, you know, just like the actual face bits and keep, you know, the eyes and lips because, oh, I really don't like it, it's too heavy. Okay, I am back and I am much happier with the way it looks now. <laughs> but yeah, this is more me, isn't it? Um, these eyelashes are super crazy though. Look at them. Hiya! But um, thank you for watching this video. I know it was like a very different, very different um, and it definitely was a story time video. Just want to let you know, like, I'm fully okay. And um, I'm really glad I just got to speak this story because, it's like, like I said, like, trauma's being heavy on my mind recently. And sometimes it helps to just, like, say the story again and again. Like, just get it out of your system and so you can look at it and realise how bad it was and not question yourself. But, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And, uh, yeah. Um, bye!